The word masterpiece gets tossed around more than a Phoenix Suns groupie. Seven basketball players in a row? Mm -hmm. And at this point, I don't even know what the fuck it means anymore. What do you mean, you people? According to the internet, it's every movie ever made. If you personally enjoyed it, Masterpiece. Gone in 60 Seconds is a cinematic masterpiece. The first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man is a cinematic masterpiece. Why Star Wars, Colin, The Last Jedi is the a emotional masterpiece. masterpiece. Why Spider-Man Spider -Man Far, Far From Home, home. Man of Steel is a damn masterpiece. masterpiece. Happy birthday, birthday to the greatest masterpiece, masterpiece, masterpiece of all time. Two is objective Captain America's cinematic masterpiece. Avengers 14 directed by Jon Favreau. Cinematic Jones, Jones, no is a cinematic masterpiece. There, I said it. Now, bro, Batman. Deja Vu 2001 is a fucking underrated, mind-blowing movie. Why the fuck is this movie so underrated? Legit, Madagascar Speed is a cinematic masterpiece. I don't care. I don't care. Now, let's be clear. I don't want anyone to stop appreciating any piece of art that they enjoy. Like, if you love Man of Steel or Deja Vu that much, good for you. I just really wish people would stop using this word so liberally, because if everything is a masterpiece, then nothing is a masterpiece. And I wasn't even going to make this video because the term cinematic masterpiece is basically just a fucking meme at this point. But one specific movie that I saw back in August pushed me over the edge. And I was going to let it go. I was. I was going to walk into the theater, roast it with my friends, and leave it at that. But it's been months now, and without even looking for it, I keep seeing people saying, Tenet, 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 is a cinematic Stunning. but confusing, modern, confusing, cinematic, confusing. Tenet is Nolan's confusing. masterpiece. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Oh, oh, come on. No, it's not. It's not even a top 10 Nolan movie. At best, it's a collection of some pretty cool action scenes with an interesting concept that is completely wasted in a boring ass, messy script that is 80% expositional dialogue that no one doesn't even want you to hear. A remote Russian missile station was overwhelmed and held for a week. So close. The Ukrainians expected the passenger. You are in for The world is not. Get the other sections of the algorithm to the hypercenter. The algorithm. Splitting the algorithm. Andreas, the algorithm. His death. Activates the algorithm. The algorithm. If you had known what the algorithm was. What's the algorithm? The algorithm. The algorithm. Shut the fuck up! Whole goddamn movie is algorithm, algorithm, algorithm. Inversion this, inversion that, bro. Unless it's gonna help me invert my viewing experience, I don't give a shit. But, but, but that's not what it's about. You're not supposed to understand it, you're supposed to feel it. Okay, you know what? Maybe I could accept that if it was true. But if it's not about the exposition and dialogue, then why is it there? And why is there so much of it? Maybe I wouldn't be so concerned with understanding the fucking concept if I wasn't constantly bombarded by terrible, nearly inaudible attempts at explaining the concept. But you know what? I could even forgive all those problems if there was anything at all to be emotionally invested in. But no, all we get is these generic characters with bland personalities. The main character is literally called the protagonist. I'm the protagonist. Get the fuck out of here. You know what's a masterpiece by Nolan? Memento. And not just because the movie is told in reverse, but because he actually manages to create a compelling story around that concept. The main character, who has a real name by the way, Leonard, has amnesia and has to try and piece his memory back together. The non-linear structure is tied directly to the main character's motives, giving us an emotional hook and an actual reason to care. What's supposed to be the emotional core of Tenet is laughable. This woman, I don't remember her name, the female lead, I assume. Well, she keeps talking about her son and how much she loves her son. You'd always see of him as a bunch of extra wide shots from someone else's perspective in a car. And like an hour and a half later, this masterpiece of a movie then goes and hits you with this Shakespearean quality line. Everyone and everything that's ever lived, destroyed, instantly. Besides love, including my son. Okay, you know what? That's actually kind of sweet. She loves him so much that she's a fucking idiot. Again, if you like this movie, then fine, whatever, but Masterpiece? Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out! No movie is perfect, but there are some glaring character and story flaws that negatively impact the entire experience. And I hate that I feel this way about Tenet because, in theory, it's exactly what I want more of from Hollywood. A big name director making a big budget movie with an original and creative concept. And that's something Nolan's managed to do in the past, but here it just seemed like he wanted an excuse to crash a plane into a building. It's a really big plane. This movie does look great, but looks can't save a bad story. I could give you a piece of shit wrapped in gold, and it might look nice, but at the end of the day, still a piece of shit. Alright, that's enough tenant for one lifetime. What else? Um, oh yeah, Rogue One is a flawed masterpiece. Now, I'm not going to go into as much detail here, because I don't have any strong feelings about this movie either way. If you're into Star Wars, it's not bad, I guess. And again, no movie is perfect, but I feel like if you have to preface your masterpiece argument with the word flawed, probably not a masterpiece. That voice crack was a masterpiece. Look, I'm not a huge Star Wars fan, but Rogue One isn't even a masterpiece in its own franchise, let alone in general. 
Personally, I don't think any of those movies are cinematic masterpieces, but I can at least see the argument for something like Empire Strikes Back. I probably wouldn't go that far, but that's okay, because what makes a masterpiece is subjective, and there's always going to be debate. The problem I have is people constantly yelling masterpiece, masterpiece, for movies that don't even belong in the conversation. Just because you love something, doesn't make it a masterpiece. Take, for example, a Goofy movie. I fucking love that movie. I think it's super underrated, and apparently a lot of other people do too. And I love that it's getting more attention nowadays, I do, but because it's so underrated, the people who love it tend to overcompensate and go around telling everyone it's a masterpiece. Look, I love this movie. I'll watch it, rewatch it, watch the sequel, listen to the soundtrack. But you know what I won't do? Call it a masterpiece. Because it's not. It's a good time, it's actually really well made, but it's not that good. It's not some kind of untouchable piece of art. That doesn't change the fact that I still love it, but just because I still love it doesn't make it a masterpiece. It's just a movie that I think is really good. And it's okay for a movie to simply be good or even genuinely great. Making a great movie is hard. It requires remarkable talent from every area of filmmaking to come together and create something that will connect with people and make them glad they spent two hours of their lives watching it. But a masterpiece has to go beyond all that. It has to push the envelope and try to elevate the art form in some way. It has to be crafted with such care and artistry that it's damn near undeniable. Even then, masterpiece status is not guaranteed, but it's what you have to do to even have a chance at achieving that status. Masterpiece should be reserved for movies that are truly special. The ones that rise above their peers, the best of the best. The ones that are amazing on first watch and only get better as you peel back the layers behind them. These are movies being created by professionals. Well made should be the expected standard. It shouldn't be celebrated as some kind of miraculous cinematic achievement. It should be the bare minimum. Look, I have no interest in telling anyone what to like or dislike, but the more we call unworthy movies masterpieces, the easier we make it for studios to get away with making formulaic movies, looking at what just came out and made money and copying their blueprint instead of trying to be original. They're putting in less effort and making more money. Not every movie has to be the greatest thing you've ever seen, but maybe if it didn't come out by the millions for every lifeless live-action Disney reboot, they might take a step back and think, hmm, per per perhaps we should use our trillions of dollars to try and make unique, innovative movies instead of soulless, forgettable cash grabs. <laughs> well, what can I say? I'm a dreamer. I know. And I get it. This is a business. Businesses need to make money. But entertainment and art do not need to be mutually exclusive. And I'm not saying that none of these movies have artistic merit, but far too often they cut corners because they know they can. And I think the quality could increase across the board if we just demanded a little bit more from them. So please, demand more from the people producing these movies. Demand more from the billion dollar corporations that view every audience member as nothing more than a potential $14 addition to their box office gross. For the sake of quality art everywhere, raise your standards. Call a bad movie a bad movie. Call a good movie a good movie. But please, save the word masterpiece for the movies that truly deserve it. Now he loves some of your movies. Memento, Insomnia, you see, so put it all behind us. Yeah. That movie Tenet, whatever happened there. All right then. Whatever happened there, the movie. Whatever happened there, God bless you, Nolan. I'll tell you what fucking happened. This piece of shit, Nolan, Calm made down. six Chill. movies about time without any provocation whatsoever. I crashed a plane. Fuck you. The algorithm.